All right, guys, uh, Jeff here. Just wanted to show you, um, I've got my solar generator out here in the uh, National Forest, Arizona, Northern Arizona, Eastern Arizona, actually, the Apache National Forest. Um, beautiful, beautiful landscape out here. Just to give you, we're still up here, a little bit snow uh, piled up out there, um, made for some muddy ride in and whatnot. But at any rate, I've got the uh, solar generator working here and i'm just going to kind of go over how that's uh, doing for us um, super happy with the way it is i've got this uh, 200 watt panel deployed and it is absolutely rocking right now so uh, this is day three of our camp and one of the things i just wanted to show you is we just got back from a quick excursion this morning um, i've had this uh, the uh, panel deployed I, I deployed it perfectly after day two just knowing where to set it um, and I've got enough cable here I could have moved this even further if I needed to but one of the things I like to do is keep the actual generator in itself underneath cover so you're not in direct sunlight of all these electronics not that they can't handle it but they do better in shade and then also if you get a the uh, you know inopportune rainstorm everything's covered um, but as you can see i'm using this uh, solar generator pr to provide the shore power for the uh, tent trailer and i've got the tent trailer set up with a couple of the other do-it-yourself projects that i'll show you later um, but these uh i've got it uh, plugged in um, this is nice my shoreline actually is about 20 feet long I really prefer not to unwind that on the inside. I prefer to keep that really kind of snugged inside there uh, just so it, it stays nice and neat. And then I'm, I'm of course using this little adapter which um, you know saves you from having to hook up that uh, 220 type line into that uh, shoreline. And I'm just using a heavy duty uh, 10 gauge extension cord to provide that power for this. Um, the way that I have this set up is I've got a lithium battery, in this case a 230 amp hour lifetime uh, 12 volt uh, PO4, so a lithium PO4 battery, and that's down there underneath this. You can see those specs on there. I've got it insulated and cushioned to handle some of the road, which getting back into these campsites is no joke. So as much cushion is there to keep kind of the abuse away from it. Um, and, I, and I used one of these Renergy uh, Rover controllers. The reason why I went with the MPPT style is because these can handle a, lo a lot larger uh, panel array. The small MPT style are designed really to float the charge on batteries, whereas these MPPT style are, you could actually really power things and just to give you some of the numbers we're getting off of our panel right now to show you what you could charge. Right now it's reading my battery at 13.5 volts, which is uh, getting close to 100%. It's showing that it's 100% here. But right now from that panel I am getting, as you can see, 8.33 amps. So I'm, I'm literally rocking. Uh, that's high amperage. You can run a lot of appliances and things with eight amps uh, a lot of different things and it's uh, putting out 41 volts so again uh, if i were to wire hardwire some of my uh, electronics that take a 12 volt style uh, charge I, I could literally power with the sun and not even use the battery of course the battery is just doing that it's it's harnessing the power of the sun um, but anyway i went with that uh, so that you can uh, use a larger panel array the the panel array that i have out here that i brought along with me this um this is actually an anchor 200 watt panel and it's foldable which is really nice and it's thin i mean this thing when you fold it up you can see this thing is thin so it's perfect when space is an issue and anytime anytime you're camping uh space is or can be an issue so and it has these uh, little kickstands in the back that allow you to uh, have this spread out uh, and point it in the sun and I'm not going to point you at the sun but you can see we are in full sun here 
and we are just rocking what we're doing. So in order to get this anchor uh, panel, which is, you know, uses their proprietary connections, you can see they use that uh, one style connection. I bought an adapter cord, which allows you to use these standard solar cables here. And that's more typical what you see coming off a of panel. So I converted my anchor to allow it to use with non-anchor type of products, uh, which I thought worked out good. Um, at any rate, I'm using the charge controller to then, then send all that electricity that we're generating down to that 230 amp hour battery. And then from that, we're using this 2000 watt uh, Renergy inverter. Um, I really like this inverter. Uh, it is tried and true. I've used it in several builds. One of the things that is nice about it is it does have a remote control. And I'll probably put that in the trailer here tonight. Um, so far I've had it out. There's the remote control. So you can literally uh, operate this if I wanted to snake this through the canvas of the tent trailer and have that right by the other parts of the powerhouse then you could do it and it's a setting that you turn it to so there's actually a couple of settings here on the front of this that allow you to change and select that to be in remote control setting you can see that right right there so there's setting two setting one uh, so that way the remote controls it and then because of this build, the way that I have this, uh, it fits nicely in this Harbor Freight box that I used. Um, this Harbor Freight box uh, fits the battery and the charge controller. I've got extra panel cables. I've got extra battery cables and extension cords that can go inside there. Um, but one thing that it does is, is that it kind of puts a kink right on your uh, extension cord so this little 90 degree guy gets me out of the box without putting any undue stress on your uh, cables and still allows you to put that lid back on which is nice so I can seal that up now obviously if I'm running this inverter at a really high charge um, then these fans will kick in and you don't want those uh, to be isolated or confined I know this tent trailer there is nothing on here that's going to cause this inverter to work that hard uh, the biggest thing that i ever run in here is a like a mr coffee coffee maker and yes that does draw a lot of electricity but it does it in a short short period of time um, and then really the standard thing is the furnace it's a uh, gas furnace with just an electric blower motor and this uh, Renergy system will run that. All the lights and the uh, electric up and down of the canopy and all of that, it works really, really great. So anyway, um, I really love this uh, setup. This uh, build is actually a super easy build. Um, the only thing in here that you don't need to have, but I love having, is this battery monitor. I use this Renergy battery monitor. This uh, is, in my mind, an absolute must, as you can see in the current condition. So just having the inverter on, all I have is the inverter on. There might be a light or two on in the trailer uh, that didn't get turned off. But you can see, just having the inverter turned on, you draw electricity. And, you know, most people don't understand that. So it's important when you're not needing the uh, electricity in the trailer to go ahead and kill it. Uh, so when I kill this, you're gonna see that that's gonna go down to a zero net deficiency, right? And then uh, you, you can notice that it, um, so there we are zeroed out. Uh, that, that just shows you how much battery you have stored up. So at this rate, and it'll take a second to calculate, but uh, you can see this number right here. So it shows I'm 100% charged at 13.3 volts. It's showing 56 hours, but it'll it'll take a second and it'll recalculate because I'm not drawing anything on that. Uh, it calculates how much uh, time you have left in your battery. So the battery monitor isn't necessary. You don't have to have that to make any of this work. Really, the, the simple components are a panel, a charge controller, a battery, and an inverter. So four things can make all of this work. 
but that battery monitor just helps you with the sanity side of it so you know okay well I have stored up in here uh, 229 amp hours uh, it's going to give me hours and hours of use even if I don't add another drop of sunlight to this so anyway um, I'm out here using it so this isn't just theory it's something that I've put into practice I use this whole setup when I go camping um, and uh, wish I could camp a lot more than I do, but uh, this, this system eliminates the need and the annoying hum and drum of, an, of a gas or otherwise a diesel generator that usually powers up these kind of things. So here we are in the outdoors. There's literally not another soul in sight. Uh, we are out here as far off the grid as you can be, and uh, this setting is just absolutely perfect to put and use that uh, charge controller. So anyway, um, I hope you guys like these videos. This, this uh, solar generator is an easy do-it-yourself project. If you haven't checked out my channel, I have a whole playlist full of do-it-yourself projects like this charge controller. A lot of them relating to camping and living off the grid and outdoor stuff. Uh, so by all means, please go ahead and feel free to subscribe and like and share the videos. Um, the only motivation I have for doing these kind of things is to get the views. So hopefully you guys are uh, willing to share and if you like what you do, you like it, you share it, you subscribe and you take the time to watch the next one that comes out. But thanks so much for watching guys. Hope to see you next time on Jeff's Gadget Gear and Good Bison.